Yeah, Tara McDonald, you're going down. Yeah, you stupid bitches at the fucking jail. Go ahead, record this call. Send it to Kara McDonald. For the first time, we're hearing jailhouse calls straight from James Crumbly, the newly convicted father of the Oxford High School shooter. Um, but we're martyrs to, to, to make sure that this doesn't happen to anybody else in America again. Not only does he call himself a martyr, he makes straight up threats in multiple calls. When I get out of here, I am on a rampage, Karen. Yes, Karen McDonald, your ass is going down and you better be fucking scared. That's prosecutor Karen McDonald, who you probably recognize from his trial. The James Crumbly failed. The calls are so severe, the case's judge even referenced them at James's sentencing. You characterized yourself as a martyr and threatened the well-being of the prosecutor. So what exactly did the calls say? Well, we'll get into that, but first, let's start with the crime itself. November the 30th, 2021, James Crumbly's 15-year-old son walked out of the boys' bathroom at Oxford High School holding a 9mm handgun. That was part of the prosecution's opening statement last month, when James headed to trial more than two years after the mass shooting. Back in 2021, James's then 15-year-old son, Ethan Crumbly, opened fire at Oxford High School in Michigan. Four students, Madison Baldwin, Tate Muir, Hannah St. Juliana, and Justin Schilling were killed. James Crumbly's son walked out, he pointed, he aimed that 9mm, and fired it 32 times over the course of the next nine minutes. He fired that weapon <coughs> at teachers and students. He killed four, wounded seven, and terrorized the entire community. Ethan was arrested just one day after the shooting, and his parents, James and his wife Jennifer, were arrested three days after that. While their son faced the more severe charges of first-degree murder, terrorism causing death, assault with intent to murder, and possession of a firearm, both Crumley parents were also charged with four counts of involuntary manslaughter. Prosecutors argued they were partially responsible because they didn't properly secure the gun that would be used for the mass shooting. James Crumley bought that gun that his son used to kill as a gift for his son four days before the attack. James Crumley failed to secure that gun in a way to prevent his son from accessing it. After some back and forth, their son ended up pleading guilty to all charges. Last December, he was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Jennifer Crumbly, however, pleaded not guilty to all her charges and headed to trial in January of this year. Less than two weeks later, she was found guilty on all counts. Just last month, James went to trial on the same charges. The shooter's case is done. The shooter's mother, Jennifer Crumbly, her case is done. You're here to decide the level of gross negligence of James Crumley. And you will learn throughout this trial that he was the adult out of anyone in the world in the best position to prevent these kids' deaths. What happened inside that school was truly a nightmare come to life. But it didn't have to. That nightmare was preventable. There are three people in this world who are criminally responsible for the deaths of Hannah, Madison, Tate, and Justin. The shooter who committed murder, no doubt, he's responsible. But so are his parents. And not for murder. They're responsible for their gross negligence, for involuntary manslaughter. But the defense countered during its opening, saying James had no idea his son was capable of something so horrific. The events of November 30th of 2021 undeniably changed people's lives in ways that most people could never imagine. Four children lost their lives. Families were destroyed. And a community was terrorized. But this case is not about what happened inside of Oxford High School. This case is about what happened outside of Oxford High School. The prosecution alleges that James Crumbly was aware that his son was a danger to others, and that he failed to protect other people from his son. The prosecution alleges that James Crumley had knowledge that his son could and would hurt other people, and that he failed 
to protect those people, that he failed to take steps to protect others. And ladies and gentlemen, that simply is not true. All this happened on the first day of trial, March 7th. That was the same day we heard about James's threatening jailhouse calls for the first time. So every call, every single call. At the time, it wasn't clear what the calls were about, just that the prosecution wanted some changes, namely that James couldn't make any calls from jail for the duration of the trial. If, if the order gets entered, we're asking that the communications be limited to only counsel and legitimate clergy during the rest of the trial. That's my request. We're talking seven or eight days. You can talk to his attorney, you can talk to legitimate clergy. You can see James react to this, at one point literally dropping his jaw. He speaks emphatically to his attorney before she says it's a no-go. And Judge, I'm happy to do that. Okay, Your Honor, my client is not willing to agree to the order. Okay, so you... It's basically restricting his ability to speak to people, Judge. I mean, it's, well, I, I it's a complete revocation, I, except I, for counsel. I, Eventually, the prosecution and defense come to an agreement. The agreement is going to be that um, Mr. Crumley's communications will be uh, revoked, but not his ability to do research or otherwise participate in his own uh, defense. So not just communicating with counsel, but his ability to read or get other information. Skip to this month when the calls are finally released. In the first call, James says the shooting wasn't his fault. So, I'm just so I know you're irritated. All this could have, like, it, none of this should have happened. It should, none of I it should have happened. Should, I know it shouldn't have happened. I know. You know? And they're trying to blame it all on us. They're trying to say none of it should have happened because of you. When we, no. it's just so ridiculous. It's, it wasn't us. It wasn't us. It was the school. In another call, he refers to himself as a murderer. Yeah, you know, we have to because the, the thing is, is that, you know, I kind of feel like a martyr, you know what I mean? Because, or mantra, or whatever, however you want to pro pronounce it. A but, martyr. Yeah. You know, if, if, if they allow this stupid thing to, to do to us what she's trying to do based upon, you know, nothing, I mean, we don't. You know, there's no, you know, there's no, she, here's the thing, she, she never did, they, 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 they never did any type of investigation before they charged us. This topic actually comes up a few times. I want you the whole time, brother. Yeah, so it, it's, it's really, it's really ridiculous. I'm getting, you know, I'm getting sick of it. But it's like I told you, I mean, I mean, we're just, we're, we're, we're martyrs you know, without the whole dying aspect of it, because I don't know a better word to use, so I use the word martyr. Um, but we're martyrs to, to, to make sure that this doesn't happen to anybody else in America again, to make sure that, 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 that nobody like the dumb, stupid Aaron McDonald. Witness the lies. I didn't lie to you on that polygraph, I promise. The cover-ups. I could see his brain on his... The moments they confessed. I grabbed one of the kitchen knives. I... Outrageous police interrogations. I know, I forgot the head. I wanted the head. You have to see to believe. Oh my god. Law and crime interrogations. Subscribe today. And this is where Oakland County Prosecutor Karen McDonald comes into play. Uh, obviously, you know, uneducated, ignorant, you know, district attorney can, can do something like this to somebody else ever again. I mean, it's just... It's just ridiculous. So, you know, we're going to fight the we're going to fight the good battle for for everybody else. It's like, you know, I mean, I, 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 I feel like I joined the military and I'm going to fight for my country. You know, I kind of am I'm fighting for everybody else's freedom. That's one of James's more tame recordings. In most of them, he swears regularly, taking aim at Karen McDonald. And he even acknowledges that the calls are being recorded. Yeah, Karen McDonald, you're going yeah. down. Yeah, you stupid <laughs> is at the jail. Go ahead. Report this call. Send it to Karen McDonald. Stop tell, her it. How, tell her how James Crumb was going to take her down. She will not have a law license when I get done with her. And like I said earlier, Karen McDonald will be working at McDonald's because she ain't going to be able to get a job anywhere else. 
And yet another call, the threats continue. I can't even discuss it on the phone because then I give away stuff to you. Right, uh, right. Dumb, Karen McDonald. <sighs> they, can listen, they can listen to my phone calls all they want. I don't give a I know. Stupid. Anyways, all her, all her lies are unraveling, and um, they will continue to unravel, and she will continue to fall. Until she's God forbid one of her kids put her in some kind of position. Mm-mm-mm. Karma's a bit. Karma's a bit. Well, she's going to be sucking on a hot rock down in hell soon. In this call, he says Karen McDonald better be scared. You know what? Mm-hmm. In three months from now, she's been going down. I mean, it's going down. When I get out of here, I am and on a rampage, Karen. Yes, Karen McDonald, you're going down and you better be scared. At one point, James gets cut off mid-rant. Stupid <laughs> Yeah, you, Karen McDonald, you're a stupid bitch. I hope you're listening to this. You These calls date back to 2022, but a police report wasn't filed until last month, midway through James's trial. By March 13th, the trial reached closing arguments, where prosecutors maintained James Crumbly should be held accountable. That James Crumbly failed. He might love his kid, I hope he does. But stick to what I have to prove. Stick to what I have to prove. And remember that he didn't just fail in his duty to his son. He failed in his duty to protect Hannah and Justin and Madison and Tate. And I'm not, I don't, I don't say their names to evoke sympathy. I say their names because they matter. They matter. And that is why we are here. We are absolutely here about what happened in that school that day. Because if James Crumbly has done even the smallest of things, like the 10 second cable lock or gone home, or, or took responsibility for his kid who was in trouble, those kids would not have been shot and killed in that school on that day. And the defense countered, saying James was not responsible. He did not know he had to protect others from his son. He did not know he wasn't exercising ordinary care in the way he was storing his firearm because he didn't know that his son was planning what he was planning. He did not know that it was reasonably foreseeable that his son would commit these offenses. He had taught his son firearm safety. He had taught his son to be familiar with those firearms because they were in the house. He had no idea what his son was planning to do. In fact, no one that interacted with James Crumbly's son on November 30th of 2021 knew what was going to happen a short time later. Just one day after closings were presented, a jury found James Crumbly guilty on all counts. Count one, involuntary manslaughter as to Madison Baldwin, guilty of involuntary manslaughter as to Madison Baldwin. Count two, involuntary manslaughter as to Tate Mir, guilty of involuntary manslaughter as to Tate Mir. Count three, involuntary manslaughter as to Hannah St. Juliana, guilty of involuntary manslaughter as to Hannah St. Juliana. Count four, involuntary manslaughter as to Justin Schilling, guilty of involuntary manslaughter as to Justin Schilling. Fast forward to sentencing when we hear from James Crumbly himself for the first time because he declined to testify. I have cried for you and the loss of your children more times than I can count. I know your pain and loss will never go away. Part of you will be missing forever. But please know that I am truly very sorry. I am sorry for your loss as a result of what my son did. I cannot express how much I wish 
that I hadn't known what was going on with him or what was going to happen because I absolutely would have done a lot of things differently. With that statement aside, the prosecution, headed by Karen McDonald, pushed for the most severe sentence. They do nothing and then they come here today and they claim they're victims of the school, of the prosecution, of the emotional tensions of public opinion. But there were two long and rigorous and detailed trials that included multiple victims and witnesses who testified under oath with hundreds of exhibits presented to the juries with the safeguard of this court allowing what they could see and what they couldn't see and they were defended by two attorneys aptly and vigorously that is what this conviction is about and when fashioning a sentence it is absolutely critical that you that you listen and consider the impact of what that gross negligence costs. So we're asking you to exceed the guidelines because I believe all of the factors pursuant to the case law with the necessary consideration of the impact of these crimes justifies you to do. Back to James's phone calls. In a statement to local outlets, Chief Assistant Prosecutor David Williams says, quote, we raise the issue of the calls and threats privately with the court, the sheriff's office and defense counsel beforehand. We did that because James Crumbly was going to be sitting within a few feet of the prosecutor for two weeks, unshackled, and he presented a serious security threat. We did not mention anything at all about any calls or threats in the courtroom. We never publicly referenced the calls or threats until after the Detroit Free Press published that the threats were against the prosecutor, citing undisclosed sources. So the prosecution didn't bring up the calls during sentencing, but the judge did. Mr. Crumley, it's clear to this court that because of you, there was unfettered access to a gun or guns, as well as ammunition in your home. You characterized yourself as a martyr and threatened the well-being of the prosecutor. In the end, matching sentences were handed down for both Jennifer and James Crumbly. As to defendant James Crumbly, it is the sentence of this court that you serve 10 to 15 years with the Michigan Department of Corrections, that you receive credit for 858 days, that you pay state costs in the matter of uh, $272, that there is a crime victim's rights fee of $130, that you or your agents have no contact with the families of Madison Baldwin, Tate Muir, Hannah St. Juliana, and uh, Justin Schilling. James Crumbly's attorney maintains he did not threaten Karen McDonald during those jailhouse phone calls, but instead was just expressing his frustration. He's since indicated he plans to appeal his conviction. Reporting for Long Crime, I'm Sierra Gillespie.